if you were a Manjaro dev over the past week, you are very likely on damage control, because once again, Manjaro had an expired SSL certificate. Now this by itself isn't inherently that big of a deal, but this isn't the first or the second time this has happened. This isn't the third time this has happened. This is the fourth time they've had an expired SSL certificate. After the second time they said this, our SSL certificate has once again expired. We are waiting for a new one to be issued while also looking at more sustainable alternatives, i.e. things like Let's Encrypt. So every single time an issue occurred, it was on a different domain. Firstly, it was on the forums, then after that, it was over on download, and now it is over on software. And you'll notice in the case of software, they are using Let's Encrypt. Now, in the case of my website, do you know why I never have my SSL certificate expire? Because I have a cron job using Let's Encrypt that reissues the certificate before it expires. And presumably, they're not manually getting certificates directly from Let's Encrypt. It's almost certain they're using something like CertBot, for example. And I don't know how you can be so incompetent that you read the CertBot tutorial and not scroll down slightly further that shows you the command to generate the cron job. You don't even need to write it by hand. It'll do it for you. But then also make the mistake on multiple separate domains that are all using Let's Encrypt. Now you might think I'm being harsh, and maybe I am, but this just goes on to the ever-growing list of reasons why it seems like Manjaro has absolutely no idea what they're doing. So let's just go through some of those reasons. The first problem is holding back packages. So Manjaro is only kind of loosely based on Arch. It is based on Arch about as much as Ubuntu is based on Debian. They share the same package manager, they share the same packaging format, and technically a lot of their packages come from the same location, but their repos are separate. So the Manjaro repos in many cases of packages held back up to two or so weeks. And the reason for this is to make sure they are more tested, make sure they're more stable and things like that. And you know what? That's not inherently a bad goal. But the main reason that people use Arch is the AUR. And the AUR is entirely designed around the packages available in the Arch Linux repos. So if you're effectively running a system that is two weeks out of date, you can't really expect the AUR to properly function, which wouldn't be that big of a deal if Manjaro didn't ship PAMAC, which lets you download stuff from the AUR basically transparently. Now, to Manjaro's credit, they do say the AUR isn't officially supported, but shipping a tool that lets you interact directly with the AUR doesn't really line up with that statement. They've also had their fair share of questionable management decisions. I'll leave the archives of this in the description down below, but basically, a few years back in 2020, there was a dispute over how project funds should be used. The project lead wanted to purchase a new 2000 euro laptop. This was going to be used for development and things like that involved in the project. But the treasurer at the time felt like this was a really poor use of funds, and it would be much better spent on things like a build server, because 2,000 euro would have paid for like multiple years. Ultimately, the project lead got their way, and they got a new laptop. This led to the treasurer departing from the project, because their opinion was not being respected, and they're the treasurer, they're the one who's supposed to be making sure the funds are being, you know, adequately used. And before departing, saying, at this point, Manjaro doesn't seem all that friendly anymore. And how about we talk about quality assurance? Let's start off with PAMAC. There have been multiple points over the past couple of years where PAMAC has been banned from the AUR. The reason they've been banned is for inadvertently DDoSing the service. The first time was in 2020, and the second time was in 2021. Both of these linked the changes to the way that searching the AUR worked. And besides doing testing to make sure the feature actually functions, it doesn't seem like proper testing was actually done. Because both of these times, it was massively increasing the number of network requests, which is such an easy thing to spot during testing. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was tested. But what I can say for an absolute fact 
is no one considered what happens if we take this number of network requests for one user and then scale this up to a thousand or ten thousand doing it at the exact same time. What sort of effect is that going to have on the AUR? Clearly, enough to bring it down. And so far in 2022 we've been safe, but there's still plenty of months left to crash the AUR again. And the next thing, a little while back I covered a website called Don't Ship It. Please do not ship work in progress to users. This is all about how distros shouldn't go and take extra work in progress patches on a project, add them into the project, and then ship that to the users. If you're going to do that, please first consult upstream and make sure those patches are thoroughly tested. And while other distros are involved, Manjaro is a pretty major reason behind this initiative being created. So back in July, this is what Manjaro did. Not the first time, just an example I have at hand. Manjaro Linux really can't help themselves, but ship unmerged patches. This time they broke Chatty again by including three merge requests in Chatty on their stable branch, one of which is actually closed. Now for this closed merge request, it says, this doesn't appear to be how new chats are made anymore, so I am closing. They included something that the dev on the merge request is saying, this is not going to work. Do not use this. It's one thing to include random other merge requests when you don't consult upstream. It's another thing when you do so, and you also don't test it before shipping it to users. And here's a fun one. Over the years, there have been multiple Manjaro announcements and pieces of documentation that recommend using Pacman-SY. And if you know anything about using Pacman, you would know you never run it in this configuration. So capital S is going to let you install a package. Now Y is going to update your package database, but isn't going to install the updates. So when you go and install a package like this, it is going to install it with a newer database than you have installed for your system, leading to a partial upgrade. Which isn't going to suddenly break your system and cause it to not boot, but it's explicitly not supported inside of Arch Linux and by extension is not supported inside of Manjaro. And none of these things individually are that big of a deal. Hey, Sometimes people ship bugs. Sometimes documentation is a little bit wrong. Sometimes your SSL certificates aren't set up properly and will expire without you realizing they've expired. But the problem is when this happens over and over and over and over again, it starts to become a pattern. And all of that is without getting into any of the Pine64 drama of late, where Martin Bram left the company because he felt like a monoculture around Manjaro was forming. Instead of supporting all of these different distributions that are trying to make the Linux phone experience better, instead, just offer Manjaro, which weren't really doing that much to improve the experience anyway. But I personally don't really care that much about Linux phones in the first place. If you care about the drama, I'll leave the links in the description down below. So the main reason I'm making this video is there have been multiple times in the past where I've said that Manjaro is probably fine as beginner distro. If you want something Arch based, but you don't want to use vanilla Arch, it seems like a good enough solution. But at this point, I honestly can't make that recommendation. And I totally understand wanting to use Arch, but not wanting to go through the Arch installation process. In which case there are things like Arch install shipping with the ISO, or there are a bunch of Arch GUI installers that will just give you vanilla Arch. But if you want to have a more, you know, complete experience out of the box, maybe try out something like Endeavor OS or Garuda or any of the other number of Arch distros that use the Arch core repos. I do want to make it clear that if you want to use Manjaro or you're currently using Manjaro, this isn't an attack on you as an individual. It is your computer. Do whatever you want. I am just going to put my opinion out there and if people want to listen to me, that's fine. If you don't want to and you think everything I'm saying is wrong and Manjaro is the greatest thing ever made, totally fine as well. Go ahead with what you're doing. If you'd like to read more about the mistakes of Manjaro, I'll leave some links in the description down below that I highly recommend you go and read. They are a little bit um biased against Manjaro, so do keep what they're saying with a 
grain of salt and go and actually look at the sources and come to your own conclusion. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think Manjaro is a great distro? Do you think it's terrible? Do you even use Linux? I would love to know. So that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And... Oh, man.